for them. All right, here we go. Hi, River. How are you? Thank you for bringing your cousin up. That's awesome. All right, this is not just for you. You guys, children of all ages, this is for you too. Want to know a secret? Yes. Come on, this is responsive time. It's children's <laughs> message. Do you want to know a secret? Yes. Do you promise not to tell? Oh, wait a minute, that's a Beatles song. <laughs> three weeks from this Sunday, three weeks, we're going to have a baptism right here in this church as part of worship. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? In the part of the baptismal service, it cites something that Peter talked about in our epistle lesson, and that's comparing baptism to Noah's flood. Now, you know what happened to Noah's flood, right? What happened? Bunch of water. Bunch of water poured over where Noah was and all the people. You know, we're not really sure, but we're not sure that it ever really rained up until that time. It talks about, the Bible talks about things being watered by a mist, and there were rivers. But even if there was rain, there was never a rain like this. Chances are, the people of Noah's time, they didn't know how to swim. So, when this water came, and there was a whole bunch of water. I mean, could you imagine water all of a sudden pouring in here? Not just up to your knees, not just up to your chest, but how about higher than the ceiling? Look up. Can you imagine that much water? Now, even if you could swim, how long do you think you could survive? Not 40 days. And it wasn't just calm water either. That was waves crashing over you. If you've ever been in the ocean when there's huge waves, it's hard to swim, and there's chances are you'll drown And that's what happened to the people in Noah's time. So how does that fit with our baptism? Well, water got rid of all the evil people, but water saved Noah and his family. People that were in right standing with God, that believed in God, that loved him, and God loved them. The water saved them because they were in the ark, in this big boat, and the water lifted them up above all of the destruction below and carried them safely and deposited them in a new, fresh land after the water subsided. So baptism for you and I, and River, this happened in your baptism. That baptismal water washes away all the evil in us, removes it completely. And your baptism places you not in Noah's Ark, but in something like an Ark, which is the church, You know, if you look up, you can't see it in this church, but when you go to other churches, all of you, look up at the ceiling, and sometimes you will see it's in the shape, if you can imagine, of a boat upside down with the beams coming together, concave, and that's because in the history of the church, the church is the ark, the ark that baptism places us in, and it carries us through all the problems in this world, lifts us up, keeps us in faith toward Christ and will deposit us on the shores of eternal life. That's why baptism is a sign and a symbol, or the flood is a sign and a symbol of baptism, and it's a wonderful wonderful sign. It shows how much God loved Noah and his family then, and it shows how much God loves you and I today, that he would save us from eternal death and bring us everlasting life, even this little guy right here. Will you join me in prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you you for the gift of baptism baptism from saving me me of a life apart from you you and bringing me into your presence presence now and for eternity. eternity. In In Jesus' name. Thank you guys for listening. You, both of you, you listen very, very good. You can head back to your mom and dad's, or if you'd like, you can go with Miss Chrissy for uh, Children's Church.
we continue on with our sermon hymn.